In this video, we will create a realistic grass field. For this, we will first prepare our grass assets, then use Chaos Scatter to populate an entire area, and finally use some more advanced techniques for customizing our look. So in this video here, we're gonna create a simple but realistic looking grass setup in V-Ray. And we're only gonna be using V-Ray's native built-in tools, so no special plugins required. We're gonna be breaking down the whole process and also talk about some kind of difficulties, for example, how we can add these kind of tiles in here, how we can maintain a sharp outline here of our grass, how we can randomize the colors, and also lots of other additional details. As always, you can find my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering and lots of other additional goodies, so you can check this out if that's interesting for you. Otherwise, let's just break down the whole process and see how this setup here was done. So this one right here would be our starting situation and you can see it looks rather sad because obviously we're missing all of the nice green grass in here and in order to change that we first need to have some kind of grass assets that we can distribute here on our surface. So there are multiple places where you can find those kind of assets for example here in the Chaos Cosmos browser there's a huge section about different type of grass assets that you can readily import in your scene. But since I want to keep this tutorial a little bit more general, we will use some assets that can be found in Megascans. So here we're in Quixel Bridge to find some nice assets for our grass. And let's head on to the 3D plant section over here. And then in this grass category, you can find lots of different models here for your grass. In my case, I just ended up using these simple grass clumps in here. And before you download, make sure to check your download settings. In this case, we need an albedo map, a roughness map, a normal map, opacity map, and translucency map. You can choose a different resolution. In my case, I just used 4K, but you could also use lower resolutions. It probably wouldn't really make any difference in this case. And just download this and then export it to 3ds Max. So here are the models that we got from Quixel Bridge. And normally they also come with some kind of a dummy material already applied. But I normally don't tend to use this because this is done in a really bad way. So I just emptied everything out. I just created a simple new V-Ray material and just applied those to our models in here. So as you can see, the models are super simple, just a bunch of different planes basically stuck into each other. And that's because all of the heavy lifting comes from the textures mainly the opacity map. So let's use the opacity map and connect that into the opacity slot here of our material. And now the whole thing already starts to look very different. So by default, the opacity mode in the VRAM material is set to stochastic, which allows for half transparent pixels to be shown correctly. But in our case, we have this very clear cutout between our opaque and transparent pixels. So we don't really need the stochastic mode. We can switch that to the most performant mode, which would be the clip mode. And this should overall make the rendering of those objects here faster. So now we can take care of our other maps. And it's quite simple. You just connect here the albedo map to the diffuse slot. And for the normal map, we just need a V-Ray normal map modifier in here. Then we have to flip this green channel because if the assets come from mega scans, you always have to make sure that the green channel here is flipped. And let's connect this into the normal map slot. So also our normal map is shown correctly. And this, of course, will only be visible for some extreme close-ups. Let's now connect here our roughness map into the roughness slot of the material. And now I think we have already quite a good starting point. So let's zoom in a little bit and check what we have here exactly. So while this does look okay, it's kind of missing a very important factor and that would be the translucency. You can see that very clearly in this part in here. So even though we have a very strong sunlight coming from one direction and the front side here of the grass would be very brightly illuminated, none of that is scattered here to the backside. And that's why we have this very dark backside feeling and it makes the grass overall look very, very hard. So in order to change that, we have to switch our translucency mode here from none to subsurface scattering. And once you do this, initially it does look very weird and that's because our geometry here is just single-sided polygons, not closed surfaces basically. And that's why we have to switch this mode here to thin walled. And once we do this, you can see it will start to look better already. So now with this subsurface scattering color, we can define our look and let's choose, for example, this kind of reddish color tone in here. And now you can see we have here 
the back side which is basically scattered the light that comes from the front here also towards the back you can see the shadows here are passed through the grass we kind of get the feeling that this here is a translucent object of course at the moment here the subsurface scattering color is completely wrong and we just will take this translucency map that we downloaded from quixel bridge into the subsurface scattering color you can see now we can get a very nice result so this one here would be the result with translucency enabled and if i put the subsurface amount here to zero then you can see how the shader here looks like without the subsurface scattering effect in our case let's put this back to 0.75 again and you can see this immediately will make it look much more realistic in here so now we're almost finished with the preparation of our assets but since we only have three different assets in here i'm a little bit worried that if we scatter those around on a very huge surface it might look a little bit repetitive so i want to add some further randomizations to them so in order to do that we will add a simple v-ray multi subtexture node in here and we will switch the type to random and change the slots to zero and now we can connect our translucency map into the default slot and then the output of the multi subtexture into the translucency slot at the moment nothing really changes and that's because we have to add some additional settings in here so first we would need to define how we want to apply those randomizations in this case i will use by element then also by particle id because later on when those assets are scattered on our surface they will be treated as separate particle ids and now we can randomize here this model let's go to some very extreme values so you can see what's happening you can see we have these random colors now which are applied here to this model in this case i will dial down those settings here a lot so let's go with a u variation of 10 with a saturation variation of 25 and a gamma variation of two in this case. So in order to keep it simple, I only applied those randomizations to the translucency part of the shader. But if you want to, you can also apply this to the albedo part here of our shader. And now we basically prepared our assets and we are ready to scatter them on our surfaces. On a quick side note, I'm happy to tell you that Chaos decided to support viewers of my channel by offering an exclusive 20% discount on your V-Ray license. So you can get this by visiting this link down here or by scanning this QR code. By doing this, you will be forwarded to an exclusive area on the Chaos website where once again, you can verify that you can get 20% off your V-Ray license. And if you scroll down, you should be able to see the discounted prices in here. So if you take this offer, you can save yourself 20% and also support my channel by doing so. Just mind that this offer is temporary, so just verify that the offer still exists at the time you stumble upon this video in here. And now let's go back to the content. So now back in 3ds Max, we're able to distribute here our three grass assets that we prepared on our surface. And you can see that I also prepared the surface here already just with a very simple earth material shader. And I think that's important because if you have some gaps in between the grass, you can see some real earth underneath that will always make it look much more realistic. So now instead of using some specialized plugin like Forest Pack, we're going to use Chaos built-in scatter solution, which is called Chaos Scatter, and it comes for free within V-Ray. So you don't need any kind of special plugins if you have a license of V-Ray. And it's totally sufficient for these types of situations. So in order to set this up, we can just press this button in here and that will allow us to create a chaos scatter object in our scene somewhere. So let's just place that here. And in the modifier tab, we can then define our surface where we want to have our assets placed onto. So let's select here this earth surface. And then let's select those three different grass assets and as soon as i do this you can already see those are added to this list in here and they start to appear on our surface so at the moment it looks quite patchy and that's because we don't have enough grass to show up on our surface so if we scroll down to this surface scattering section here you can see that we have 1000 instances which are scattered across our whole floor and in this scene that's not enough to cover the whole floor so we can choose a different method by just lowering this temporarily to one and then enabling this per square option. And now we have on average one instance for every square meter. And now we can just increase our count to let's say, for example, 10. 
And now you can see that our whole floor is almost entirely covered with grass. And we still have some of those kind of natural patches in here, which I think look nice in this case. So I will leave them because I think normally 3D grass has the problem that it looks always too perfect. So I would rather like to keep this kind of like natural hose in here. But if you want to close them, you can easily raise the count here to 15, for example. And you can see that more and more of those holes would be closed. In our case, let's go down to 10 again in order to keep a little bit more natural look in here. So now we have some nice looking grass field already, but there are some issues which I would like to address. The first thing is that there is not really this sharp separation anymore between our path here and the grass field. And that's because if some of those grass patches, you can see they are circular in shape, are scattered very close to the edge of our surface, they kind of like overgrow the surface and it looks like they're growing on this pathway here. So we want to address this. And luckily there's a very easy option to do that. And that is by just enabling this edge trimming option here. So if we do that, you can see it will immediately update. And we don't really have this issue anymore that the grass is overgrowing here on the pathway, but it's clearly cut at exactly the shape of our base surface, which in this case is exactly what we want. So that quite easily fixed this problem. But remember there was also this stone path going across our grass field. You can still see that in the viewport up here. And this now also is completely overgrown by the grass. So there are multiple ways to fix that, but by far the easiest is if you scroll down to this area section here, you can define some spline includes and spline excludes. So now let's see how this works by just creating a completely new circular spline, for example, and then in our chaos scatter object, we can then define this as a spline exclude. And then if we select our circle and move that, for example, here on top of our surface, you can see wherever the circle would be placed, there wouldn't be any grass growing in here. So now we can use the same kind of technique for our stone path. And I prepared this already. If you check here, you can see that I have already a simple spline setup basically which traces the shape of each of these stones in here. And we can easily then just also add this in our area exclude by just selecting this. And then once this is done, you can see that our stones are appearing again. Now we would of course have to disable or remove our circle in here. And like this, you can see it's quite easy to define where exactly you would want your grass to grow. So for this stone pass, that was very easy to do because the shape is just rectangular. It's quite easy to make a spline that fits exactly the shape. If you have a more complex surface, you might want to consider to use booleans to bool then a hole into the ground and then basically have this use here, the edge trimming in order to cut out the grass exactly in the area where you would want it. So lastly, I want to show you a third option to define the placement of the grass, and that would be to use the map option in here. So in this, you can load a simple black and white map where white basically means full amount and black means no grass at all. And in our case, let's just use a V-Ray distance texture to create this black and white texture on the fly during render time. Let's open our material editor. Then we can just drag this into the material editor slot. And now we can select, for example, the wall and maybe also the floor in here. And then when we raise our distance, you can see that now towards those two geometries which we selected, we have much less grass. So here also on the wall, grass is starting to disappear. And if we increase this amount, let's say to 400, you can see that our edges here are almost empty in terms of grass, but we still have the full amount of grass towards the center of our surface. So there you have it. Those are, in my opinion, the most important settings you need to know to make a nice looking grass area. If you're interested about all of the details here of the Chaos Scatter object, you're lucky there are some own dedicated videos that you can find in my channel that goes into much more details of those in here. If you watch this content until here, chances are that you also enjoy the content that I provide on my Patreon where you can have access to all of my scene files, watch an entire course in car rendering and also have lots of additional goodies and contact me for questions and so on. So see you on over there. Otherwise, see you in the next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.